turn yourself into an animal in PowerPoint. Now that's spicy. This is a super cool advanced effect that lets you magically morph vector graphics or even photos into each other. A fun application of this is turning yourself or others into animals to bring out their wild side. This effect builds on my smoky letters trick, which I've linked to in the description, which showed you how to morph between letters and silhouettes. This new effect we'll see right now lets you transform virtually any image into another. Vectors are best, but photos work too. The overall principle here is we need to make silhouettes of each image we want to use, then fill in those silhouettes with the actual image to make what I call morphable images. Now these look exactly like the originals, but they are incredibly cool because you can morph them into each other by simply dropping them into slides with a morph transition between each one and you can go in any order by mixing up the slides as well. So let's try this out. The easiest way to do this is with vector images since they can be ungrouped into their individual shapes and edited. You can get these in many places from Shutterstock for example or for free on freepick.com in EPS format which you can then convert into EMF and then ungroup in PowerPoint. Check out the link below for my blog post for how to do that. For now, let's start off with this picture of a rabbit, which I got from freepick.com and have already imported into PowerPoint. So I hit Control Shift G to ungroup this. The good thing about vector images is that oftentimes you have a layer that is already serving as kind of like that background or silhouette. And instead of taking this out, we actually duplicate it so that we can work with it. So control D to duplicate. And then let's put that off to the side. Great. So now we paste this image into here as a fill to make our morphable object. To do that, we select everything here like this and then hit control C to copy. Select this, go to Format, Shape Styles, Fill, Picture or Texture Fill, and then Insert Picture from Clipboard. Perfect. Now these two look exactly the same, but this is now a morphable object. In order to work with this morphable object, we simply put it on its own slide. So let's delete this one here. And now if you drop the same style of morphable object on the second slide, for example, this bear that I created, and you put a morph transition on that second slide, then you get this effect here. Very, very cool. And actually I've included this bear and rabbit and two other forest animals in my free download that you can get at the link below. So that's how you do this trick with vectors. And of course, if you want to modify any pieces of your vector image before pasting it back in, you can do that as well. And this is exactly what I did with the intro to this video. I started off with a vector image kind of like this. And then before I pasted it into the silhouette, I simply replaced this part of her face with a screenshot of my own face, which was the last frame of the video that was playing, which I cropped to be a an oval using the format and then video shape options. So I did the oval here. And then I also added some soft edges here to make that blend in really nicely with the background there. And there you go. And once I made this into a morphable object, I then did the same thing to the fox here and then 
I put a morph transition between to get that effect that you saw. Great, and although it's a little bit trickier, you can do this trick with photos as well. So let's take a look at how to do that right now. For photos, it's best if you have an image that is isolated on a white background like this, although it doesn't necessarily need to be. So let's make a duplicate of this by hitting Control D and let's start working on the silhouette. So it is a little bit tricky, but doable. So to start off, we go to Format, and then let's play around with the brightness and contrast settings because we want this to be as dark as possible. So let's go to something like this. Now at this point, we go to Color, and then we choose one of these options here because we want to turn it completely to black and white. So something like this. Okay, that could work even better. Essentially, you wanna make it as black as possible without making the whole rectangle black, which sometimes happens. At this point, we're gonna to need to fill in all of these white areas. At this point, we're gonna to need to fill in all of these white areas, including the spaces between his elbows here. We want it to be completely a black silhouette with no spaces in between. To do that, we go to Insert, and then Shapes, and let's just start putting black circles in here. I'm gonna start off with blue here and change it to black. So just keep kind of duplicating it and kind of pasting it over. So just fill in all of these little areas here. You can even zoom in to make it easier. Try not to go outside of the silhouette because that's gonna screw things up for you later on. And then let's get his ear here. Okay, let's zoom out and see if we have any more white areas. Looks like we have a small tiny dot right there, so let's just fill that in. Great, so you have your kind of silhouette looking thing <laughs> right here. It's kind of a fake one, but good enough for us to work with. At this point, we're going to save this as an image so that way it's all kind of compressed into one layer. So we right click and then we go to save as picture. So now that we have that saved as a ping image we now go to the free website called autotracer.org. At this point, we go to Choose File, and then we choose the image that we just saved. And then make sure that the output format is an SVG, which PowerPoint now supports if you have the latest version. Go ahead and click Start. And now this has been nicely traced for us, so we're gonna be able to ungroup that black layer in PowerPoint. So let's download this first. We can minimize the window, and then we can bring this right into PowerPoint by dragging it in. Good, so we're almost done here. Now we cut this and then let's repaste it as an EMF image. So control X to cut. And now go up here to paste and go to paste special. Go ahead and choose enhanced meta file here. Looks exactly the same, but now when we hit control shift G to ungroup and then we hit yes, and now we can drag that silhouette off of the image. And go ahead and just cut that, control X, delete this, and then paste that back in. So now we have a perfect silhouette of this man. And the edges are a little bit less jagged even than what we had before, so it looks much nicer. And there's one last thing that we have to do here. 
and that is make sure that we crop this guy exactly to the same tight size as this guy. Otherwise, it's not going to look right when we paste it in. So let's recrop this to make that work. Go to crop and then just hit kind of just the edge of his head here, kind of like that. And then the edge of his elbow, edge of his shoe here, and then other elbow. Great, so let's test this out and see if it works. It doesn't have to be the same size, it just has to be the same proportions, which it is. So control C to copy, and then click on this, and then same process, go to format, shape styles, fill, and then picture or texture fill, and then clipboard. Excellent, looks very, very similar. You can see that there's a black outline around him, which we can just remove. And we can see that that looks pretty much the same as our original. Now, at this point, we can test how morphable this is by making this the same color as the previous background. Let's just duplicate that, remove the bear, take this guy, copy him, make sure there's a morph transition here, and let's test it out. Excellent. This works especially well when your two objects are different shapes because it creates more of that smokiness effect, which is why I really wanted to use that human to animal morph example here. Well, hope you enjoyed. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you liked this video and check out my other ones as well. Thanks for watching and see you for my next one.